about it. Thank God for uh, Prophet Ralph and teaching first session this morning. Certainly, uh, we all got empowered and got our minds relieved, got our perspectives adjusted. This DNA uh, is, is, is really profound. Uh, and uh, I, I want to share, start off, I want to share a couple of dream, a couple things about some dreams I, I have. You know, a prophet, as a prophet, I have a, a dream a lot and uh, visions and things like that. And in years past, I used to have dreams about being in a car, driving, riding. Those dreams speak to transition, of course. And I'll always pay attention. Someone taught me to always pay attention who's driving. And if I didn't see myself driving, if someone, if I saw someone else driving, I understood that someone else is making some decisions that's impacting my life. And so I will always pay attention to who is driving. And so in most cases during that particular season of my life, I would be driving the vehicle. Over the course of uh, uh, some years now, now when I see myself in a car, I'm in the passenger seat and I don't see who's driving. So something has transformed in my life and it's actually the DNA of God driving. It's the plan of God driving. It's been a process to get someone else out of that seat driving, to me in that seat driving, to me now being in the place where I understand that's a revelation knowledge, I understand the key to the point that it's now the plan of God, it's now the purpose of God, it's that DNA that's driving. I used to have, and over the course of the last couple of years, I've had some dreams about navigation systems, mm -hmm. GPS systems. On one particular dream, uh, I had this person with me, and we were using a GPS or navigation system to navigate our way. And we got to a place where it seems like we kind of got crossed up a little bit. And this other person was carrying or uh, using the GPS, and I told him to put the address in. And then he just kind of dropped the GPS and ran, ran off. And it, the GPS was broken. And right after that, I began to, the whole vision for my life began to unfold and I began to see some things. That GPS in that particular dream represented the external things that were trying to drive my life. Mm -hmm. It needed to be broken. Right. Right. Exactly, right, right. Had to be broken. Right, right. I'm sharing the, this because these are all things that are common to this path and this process that Prophet started off talking about. These things are very common. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, in Acts chapter 13, it's a familiar scripture. Let, let me just do this real quick before I go here. Because okay. somebody need to hear this. Okay. I'm in your house already. <laughs> Acts chapter 13, verse 1. It says, now, now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius, or Serene, Manny, who had been brought up with her at the Tetrarch and Saul. Verse 2 says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the who? Oh, Say what? Now separate. now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Separation and division are two different things. Don't let people talk, tell you that you're causing division because Holy Spirit has told you to separate. Failure to transition is a major point of failure for most people. I was watching Shark Tank last night, famous show. <laughs> All right, this going to bless you. So there's this guy who has a great business idea, right? The investors believed in this idea, thought it was a great business idea. 
but this guy, uh, he's successful in real estate. He's, he's worked his way up now. He's, in his particular region, he was one of the most successful persons in the real estate. His idea is not in that space. So the, 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 the issue that the investors are having with him, are you going to be willing to walk away from something you have been successful in to pursue your idea? I'm telling you, some of you all, your failure to transition out of a former space and transition into your assigned space is, in fact, your point of failure. Failure to leave when it's time to leave. Failure to go when it's time to go. Failure to walk away from a field, from a space from, a, from, a, from a, uh, a genre that you have achieved some level of success in. People that go from millionaire to billionaire left something in the millionaire space and got to something that had the potential to produce billionaire space. Failure to transition. And it's in the DNA. So once, once divine nature, we're born again, getting back to our original nature, genes, the original DNA, that's what born again, getting back. Once, once the divine nature becomes natural to you, you stop fighting the process. Once the divine nature becomes natural to you, you stop fighting the process that Prophet is just talking about that produces the most favorable outcome. But because the divine nature is not natural to you and you are more inclined to walk by what you see, what you hear, what people are saying, you are kicking against the process that wants to produce the most favorable outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And that that's where failure comes in because we're not we we don't have to fail at anything. There's no failure in our DNA. Mm -hmm. So you got. Revelation knowledge, is, it, that's what it said here, Revelation knowledge unlocks the kingdom. Revelation knowledge has to become such a force. What is revelation knowledge? It's what you don't know <coughs> that, gets, that, that, that will be revealed to you. Eyes have not seen. I haven't seen this. Ears have not heard. I haven't heard this. Neither has it entered the heart of man. I haven't comprehended this. But these things the Holy Spirit knows. He knows the plan. He's seen the whole thing from beginning to end. He knows it. It's point, failure point number two. You think you know, but you don't know. What you think you know, you don't know. You operate out of assumptions. You're reading natural things and interpreting natural things. And Holy Spirit says he don't do that. He don't teach, he compares spiritual things to spiritual. Good God Almighty. He's taking from, he's taking what he's seen and wants to talk to you about that. He ain't dealing with natural factors. So these external things, circumstances, situations, pressing needs, these cannot be in the driving seat of your life. Because now you will make decisions based on that. And that's what's in the driver's seat, not purpose, mm -hmm. not the DNA of God. You've got to get external factors. These things want to drive your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. When I stepped out of that seat while ago, mm -hmm. and that's what he was telling me, the reason why he conformed and don't inform, because when he started informing, we'll make decisions based on natural things. Right. Uh, in a spiritual thing. Right. <coughs> Needs in a driver's seat rather than the Holy Spirit in a driver's seat. Exactly. We get too much information, then we, I got it now, dog. I'm in the driver's seat again. I got this. 
and the very next very thing you decide is never, never perfect for you because you're reading natural things. All right? You gotta get, you can't let external factors drive your life. Which means that revelation knowledge has got to become such a force. I've got to be empowered with so much revelation concerning his purpose, his plan, my function, my role, my assignment, that nothing I see moves me. Only what has been revealed to me by the Spirit. So then I can go into a business understanding this is my space because it has been revealed to me. And they can tell me no, and I don't accept it. Because I understand before I will be denied, everybody in here will get moved. Come on. Come on. I was just going to say before we broke uh, for the break, when uh, Prophet was talking about, um, sorry about that. When Prophet was talking about uh, the birds, they neither, they don't worry about the different things in the GPS. But, the whole message, what the revelation he was trying to get him is they were trusting his system. Right. And so you're worrying about how to transition from the heathen or the, or the Babylonian system. I need you to understand they don't even have to sow a reap. So don't get over here and think that it's like the birds didn't even have to work. They were flowing in their own system. Right. And he's like, they're trusting the system even without sowing and reaping. Right. right. And he said, so when you come over into this system, it's a whole new thing that you don't know. See, the birds don't know about sowing and reaping, but they're able to eat, and they're able to fly, they're able. He said, you need to trust me, just like those birds, where as long as we're in the system, I don't have to worry about any of that. Right. So you got to transition without having to worry. Wow. To understand that this system works better than any other system. Right. Wow. So he was trying to get them to compare the system. He said, why are you worrying? You can't add nothing to your life. Right. You can't add hype to you by worrying. So what he's saying is stop worrying. He said, you're going to stay in worry in that system. When you get over here, just like the birds, they don't worry. Just like the flowers, they don't they don't have to worry about all these different things. So he was trying to get them, he was he was talking them through to get to the other system. Amen. Wow. Amen. Wow. Two, it's two systems, you gotta look at it that, that way. Two, <coughs> two diametrically opposed systems. First thing you gotta do is rep is understand and, 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 and be honest about which system you're operating in. And you gotta learn enough about the kingdom to be able to recognize when you're operating in the wrong system. And understand that certain things, behaviors, practices are not part of the kingdom system. The, the guy that has got to rise with me to work. We built a facility for a Lehigh concrete company in Chesterfield. And the owner, he's just a, he'll talk, he'll come over there and talk to us. It's like, flow with us, he's talking. And because of that, uh, the guy that I asked me, he said, Did you hear what he said the other day? With the owner, uh, Lehi said, I said, no, what did he say? He said, we need to keep, we want our employees in debt because all of them in debt, they need to work for us. Wow. Mm. I said, and I've been, I've been talking to him about Babylon and the kingdom system, two different systems. I said, I've been trying to tell you how the other system operates. I said, but he might have caught himself later on. He slipped up and gave him a principle that they operate by. He said, we, we want the people that work for us in debt, because as long as they're in debt, they got to keep working for us. Wow. Wow. He's millionaires. Right. That's right. how they became wealthy right. in that other system. Right. You can't be mad at him. That's the system he operates in. He's making no problems about it. So if you fall prey to that, that's on you. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I just wanted to add to that, that slave mentality also in slavery. Uh, when when the when our people were coming out of slavery, they had to book at the general store, and everything that they bought had to go on the book. And then when they tallied up, at the time when harvest came, they didn't have nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's slave mentality too. Amen. All right. Okay, let's see how far we can get today. Not that we're going to rush through this, but we, we get to learn. So let's start right here. I think we stop right here. It says, you're being shaped into his image or plan or overall destiny. All right? Again, you're, we're being conformed, not informed. He is guiding your internal compass and directing your internal navigation. All right? 
were being shaped into his image. Now that, 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 that's profound right there. Because if you understand this whole blueprint concept, you, 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 you understand how to operate in the covenant. We, Romans 8, the scripture says we are being conformed to the image of the Son. The Son, that's the word. So we have to conform to the pattern. If you can conform to the pattern that you see in the word, you can get that same manifestation. That's the way you apply pressure to the covenant. Okay, so for instance, let me give you an example. In Esther chapter 8, verse 1, I've been stuck on this scripture for a couple of weeks. In Esther chapter 8, verse 1, it says, the king gave the house of Haman to Esther. Did she ask for it? No. Had it, had it, it was added. That's the way we, we get things in the kingdom. Things are added. Mm -hmm. Jesus never told you to exercise faith for anything. Right. Jesus never, you, you're trying to exercise faith for a house or car. That's not kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's a teaching that came from people who were eating from both trees. Mm -hmm. Mixed fruit. Mm -hmm. The house was added. Now, if I can conform to that image, the same thing can happen for me. What happened here? Esther aligned her heart with the heart of the king. She got lined up with the intent, the purpose, the plan, the image of the king. And a house got added. If you can conform to the pattern, manifestation, that's what being conformed is all about. <laughs> That's what being conformed. I'm conforming to the image, the pattern. No, you're trying to apply, you're trying to, uh, you're trying to exercise faith for a house. And you're struggling to believe that God gave you a house. And you, you ought to. Because there's nothing supporting that he would just give you a house. Without, without some other things in place. <laughs> That's not what faith, your faith rests. Your faith rests. So you gotta understand concepts and principles. You gotta get the concept. You gotta get the concept. Jesus is teaching concepts. Can I show you one real quick? I'm going to show you two scriptures real quick, and then we're going to move on. I promise we're going to move on. I, mean, I got to show you this, because you got to understand this is a concept. And if you're need-based in your thinking, you're going to come up with the wrong concept every time. If you go into the Bible, you go into this covenant, and the mind of God was not need-based to start with, and you're thinking need-based, you, you, you off right up from the start. You're going to come up with the wrong concept. So you think he's talking about stuff and things, and he's not. He's trying to get your con a concept to you. He told you in Matthew, okay, don't get into things. Uh -huh. So why would he come right back and teach you to exercise straight for things? Oh, you missed the concept. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said, you got to get the kingdom concept, so seek it first, and his righteousness, and things get added. Okay, so John 12, John 14, watch this now. I'm going to show you two scriptures. Watch this, and I'm going to show you the concept. John, John 14, verse 12. Are you there? It says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Now that's the most important thing right there. That shows you his office. His role, his office now is to go to the Father for you. Read on. And whatever you ask in my name. 
when you ask something in, your, in his name, the concept is you're declaring, he's my righteousness. He's my justice.